The Venezuelan president just asked a Hong Kong reporter to speak Mandarin, and this clip is going viral. Yeah, this went all around the world and back. Let's play the clip of Nicolas Maduro during a state visit to Beijing, being asked a question by a Hong Kong reporter from Phoenix TV. I'm the journalist from Hong Kong Phoenix TV. So my question is, you have mentioned... Rich right, don't show. Uh, no translation. Uh, Hola, Mandarin. Uh, yeah. Porque no hay traducción del inglés. Uh, yeah, El nuevo mundo. Hola. Boom! Long story short, Andrew, the reporter opens up in English, right? Because he's figuring they're going to translate the English into Spanish. And the guy's like, no, habla mandarin, habla mandarin. Uh -huh. But then he also says, nuevo mundo. So the Venezuelan president is like, oh, it's a new world. Right, right, right. But I do think a lot of people are saying like... Basically, there wasn't a translator at the moment that was translating English to Spanish because they're in Beijing and the Beijing uh, translator for him was translating from Mandarin questions to Spanish for him. Right. right. But his last comment sort of sparked a ton of controversy, at least in Internet circles. All right, guys. So let's talk about what the Venezuelan president meant by this and what people are discussing. Please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys right after this. Hey, Andrew, from silly to serious, I'd say it's a silly clip. Maduro is laughing, everybody's laughing, but in terms of how the internet took it, I'd say they took it pretty serious. Yeah. But you know what else is serious, Andrew? The flavor that you're gonna get from adding smala to any noodles, pastas, mm. rice, dumplings, get it at smalasauce.com. Andrew, real truffle. Yeah, made with real truffle, made in America. Um, Pre-orders are still going on right now, guys, but we're very excited to ship it out soon. So please check out smalasauce.com. Um, let's just get into some quick thoughts, Andrew, because this could get very murky. This could get very muddy, like we said. Sort of the any sort of talk, Andrew, of changing of the world order. What are the dominant empires and yeah. ultra birds? view in the world it gets people emotional right? yeah and i think at the end of the day listen a lot of people are riding for their team you know if you are born and raised in america you're probably going to be more pro-american and you're going to be listening to the pro-american news if you're from over there if you're in china maybe you're going to be more proud that china's coming up but i'll tell you this both places have problems okay everybody in the world is having problems by the way venezuela has a bunch of problems too i'm not going to say i'm an expert on it but i just know that Okay. Everybody's got problems. Everybody's got problems in their country. But it's just funny because obviously, like, whether your country is, like, the preeminent dominant power on a metric level or how everybody feels about it, it's sort of, like, can trickle down to feelings yeah. of nationalism, right, amongst I, individual citizens on the I, internet, right? I mean, let's just put it out there. Before we get into our quick thoughts and the comment section, essentially what the Venezuelan president was kind of getting at and hinting at, kind of jokingly, was saying, hey, it's a new world. Like, Nuevo should, mundo. Yeah, speak Mandarin, not English, because more people are teaming up with China. Look, I'm in China right now. So, like, you know, maybe the world is moving away from teaming up with America and Britain and stuff. Guys, this is what it is. And obviously that made a lot of American people or Western world people feel some type of way by him even saying that. Right, right, because it sounds like an anti, like, I guess, anti-Anglo dominated or English dominated world statement, right? Right, right, right. But people are, were saying, oh, how much was it? Was it just like a casual joke? Was it this, was it that? Like we said, there is a smattering of opinions. Um, Real quick, Andrew, is it really slipping on a global stage? I would say this, I would say this, it feels like the- What is slipping? Like uh, American dominance or Anglo dominance. Sure. I would say, it feels like the lead is shortening, but it's still like definitely number one. Yeah, I think it's very hard to tell the truth on what exactly is happening because you'd have to factor in probably a hundred different factors. You'd probably have to talk to some experts from different industries and different sides of the world. Right. But I think anecdotally, Obviously, a lot of people are saying, yeah, America's slipping. Right, right. And this is the, the whole concept of Ray Dalio's book, right? right the Changing right, right. World Order and things like that. I do think the Venezuelan president, he is very cavalier and sort of trying to make cool statements. He seems like a guy who wants to be cool. Yeah. I mean, is it fair that a lot of people question the Venezuelan president and being like, well, who is this guy? Like, his country's got a ton of problems, and he's not known to be a good leader, so who cares what he says? Right, right. If you guys know about Venezuela, it's like got, like, hyperinflation right now. It's crazy. Like, a lot of people are trying to leave and come to places like America, et cetera, if they can get out. Um, I think a lot of people, they don't want a dual polar, and they don't want a multipolar world, right? Mm -hmm. I think, obviously, since the UK and since the US, us, the world has been more unipolar and definitely I can understand the fear of of changing that order, well, real right? quick what does it mean to be unipolar and basically it polar? means that there's like a, a pyramid of like power distribution hierarchy geopolitically this is like super bird's eye and America was the only country at the very very top of the pyramid 
Yeah, so you're saying that the system was simpler when America dominated the globe, essentially. Yes. And now that America is probably still dominates the globe, but now is losing yeah. some steam, yeah. that now he, they're going to have to share a space a little bit more with China, making things more complicated. Because it's less complicated when one person rules. Yes, yes, yes. But it's obviously, it's not just China, it's India, it's... Any country, you know what I mean, that wants to be more in that top power. But I guess you would say that maybe like China is the one that everybody thinks about, right? right They're like right, the right. mast of that ship, right? And I think it really also brings on a way more micro level, Andrew. It just makes you think, man, it's kind of complicated to be Chinese American, you know? Because, mm. you know, it's almost like everybody's rooting against China, but you're Chinese American and you kind of feel like you're like, well, in a way, guys, maybe the civilization that my ancestors come from. I don't know. They kind of deserve a chance too. But then you see how they're doing it and you're like, yeah, I can see why everybody doesn't like it. It's complicated. Yeah. And then, I mean, you're American and then people, you know, I know there's going to be comments being like, well, you guys are born and raised in America. You are America. America is not a race. That's a nationality. And I'm like, yeah, of course, for sure. You know, like I'm American. I'm not moving to China anytime soon. But what I'm saying is like, I guess I'd like to think that, uh, you know, our motherland could come up as well without it tearing things apart. Yeah. Like, why does it have to be so stressful, right? Right, but. right, for sure, for sure. And like we said, guys, I mean, everybody's going to have their own opinion about it. I'm sure the comment section is going to be crazy, but yeah, I mean, definitely, I wish it wasn't going how it's going, though, with mm. the whole, like, beef and the rivalry. Anyway, let's just get into the comment section, guys. Again, make sure you like this video. Somebody said, I'm sure Maduro had an interpreter to translate the Mandarin to Spanish so he could understand this situation just happened and it got blown out of proportion like it was meant to be this gigantic, like, viral moment. No, no, I think it's legit that they didn't have a, a translator because a woman comes on and says in Chinese, no translator. Yeah, she's like, meo fang right? Yeah, so that's... That's not him saying. He just played into the moment, but literally they didn't have the translator on hand at that moment. I'm sure they have the translator in general, but because he's from a Spanish country, they probably didn't expect any reporters to ask questions right. in full English. And then, of course, Andrew, there was a bunch of comments saying, yeah, but they mostly speak Cantonese in Hong Kong, so how come he didn't say, habla cantonesa, habla cantonesa? But then, of course, Andrew, they were in Beijing. He's not going to ask a question in Cantonese in Beijing to get translated into Spanish. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, somebody said, why doesn't someone ask Maduro why his people are fleeing Venezuela in droves for the U.S.? Him and his predecessor, Chavez, didn't do a good job in governing. They switched it to a socialist country, and now they got hyperinflation, and everybody wants out. So basically, someone was like, who cares what this guy thinks? This yeah. guy... Got his country going bad, right? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I mean, it's true, right? I guess people kind of, like, would judge the statements of a leader of, like, if it was France, way differently, right? Mm -hmm. um, somebody said, you know, one of the major things that China has to do is that it doesn't have to deal with Venezuelan refugees or any sort of refugee situation, um, They, whereas America does. And they're talking about, like, I guess when two countries are trying to be competitive, the U.S. does get a lot of refugees, whereas China essentially gets none. Right, makes sense. Yeah, okay. from a functional perspective. Somebody just said, um, yeah, like, of course, when a nation becomes more prosperous, many people want to um, migrate to prosperous countries. Right. Um, I mean, still to this day, I mean, you can say what you want about America. Most people want to move here. Yes. Most people want to move and stay here. Yes, I agree with that. And I just think that how we manage that diversity is just, I think we just got to do a better job of it. I think we did do a good job in the past, but maybe the way we were running the scheme back then, we yeah. got to think of a new scheme and we got to get everybody on the yeah, same page. I mean, but that's not going to happen. Everybody's just gridlocked trying to fight each other over the system changes. Right, right, right. Um, somebody said, man, if you guys really understand it's all the sanctions and the U.S. State Department always meddling in Central and South America, it bungled everything. Now, of course, now they all want out to come to America. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is what a major criticism of American foreign policy so is, right? So, so some people are criticizing, saying that so many people from Venezuela want to flee Venezuela and come to America, but then here's the president of Venezuela kind of sort of taking a jab at America. Right. So, because uh, they, they got, I guess they got a big oil deal to go to China, right? Mm. Um, somebody said, we are moving to a multipolar world and that's a very good thing. Somebody said, yes, I'm fine with that, but I'm ultimately in the minority because I'm not scared of seeing the possibilities, but change is constant and those who remain in charge are more ignorant than necessary. So basically, um, yeah, somebody was just saying, don't be scared of the changing world because right. this always happens. Uh, that is sort of Ray Dalio's stance, but I, I could see a lot of people 
they are scared. I, I guess anytime there is change, there's usually some conflict. I don't know what that looks like nowadays. You know yeah. what I mean? But that's what people are probably scared of. I hope not. I hope yeah. that there's not conflict. Somebody said, the world is choosing sides. I had hoped that my kids would be able to live in a world of peace, but it doesn't look like they will get to. Mm. And someone said, indeed, waves of lunacy repeat. Andrew, this is a crazy comment to emerge from just the Venezuelan president saying, habla mandarin, right? Yeah. It, it goes to show you that I felt like this topic was really on people's minds. And then this is just like, almost like a... It's almost like an emotional visual incident to draw it out, right? I guess to see a president of another country, no matter what the country is, say something like this. Uh, yeah, it, it, is, it is kind of like visceral. Like it hits people. They're like, oh man, what now? It's not just the internet conversation. It's not just a conversation, conversation between economists. It's like presidents are saying this now. Right, Like right. it's so matter of fact. Right, right. Even though technically it's the president of a, of a country that is not doing so well right now. Um, somebody was saying, you know, the reason why America's going down is because we're divided internally because we, uh, China and Russia got a hold of the TikTok algorithm and they're dividing people through identities so we can't get anything done anymore. Yeah, that's ridiculous, man. I mean, that Stop is blaming the it on TikTok and China being controlled, man. This, this, that's like not the thing. I, and then somebody said, no, listen, guys, I'm a proud American and Americans always fight internally and we get divided just because that's what we like to do because we get bored with how good everything is. But then once there's a foreigner that becomes strong enough, we band together and then we remove that threat and then we go back to our normal routine of just fighting each other again. I that's thought that funny. that was a really funny that's American funny. breakdown. Um, somebody was just saying, hey, guys, if you speak English, Mandarin, Chinese, and Spanish, you could probably communicate with about 85% of the entire world. Mm. That's actually true. Andrew, the next biggest languages are Hindi, Arabic, and French. But, of course, a lot of people in India actually speak English as well. Um, somebody said choosing to support China as its economy is crumbling is smart, huh? And then somebody was saying, uh, yeah, it has to do with Evergrande, Andrew, and aging population. A lot of the kids in China right now cannot find work. And this kind of goes to, like, another thing that's really popular in the media right now where a lot of people are saying that China is never going to reach that 1B status. Mm. because of uh, things that are out of its control. Oh, you mean like China did come up a lot, but it's not going to actually ever be on America's level. It's levels. never actually going to break into the top tier. Because it has a lot of uh, stifling issues right now. That it can cannot control. Right. And I honestly, there's actually some truth to that too. I don't know how much. I mean, I, I see what they mean, but does China need to be 1B to even still challenge America? No, not really. No, no I don't to know. be honest. Uh, what does it mean to be 1B? Who cares about the ranking or who doesn't care? Like, yeah. does that make you feel better if they're not 1B? Or are you are you safe or like, oh, America has nothing to worry about? What if it's 1C for, for China? <laughs> for 1C. One China policy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrew, let's just get into our takeaways. Obviously, this is a hot geopolitical topic and people are going to be like, oh, this and that because people feel so emotional about these type of things. Um, one, you know, the thing that was interesting and real quick, this is a silly thought, Andrew. The president's name is Maduro, and they also eat Maduros in Venezuela, yeah. which is like a fried plantain. Yeah, shout right? out. I've had a Patacon Pisao uh, over in New York. They, yeah. have, they have like, where it's like a sandwich, but sandwiched between uh, mashed plantains together. So that's like the bun. Why do you think such an innocuous clip just sparks like this whole world of discussions, right? Yeah, I think there's some people love talking about on the internet, man. And people feel so many different types of ways and... I think a lot, obviously a lot of people on the internet think they understand the situation. I don't try to pretend I have all the exact numbers, right? Everybody just generally is like, there's like a general consensus of what's going on, but you don't really know unless you actually study this stuff like in and out. Right, right. And then even then you might just have like a biased perspective. I think the truth is nobody really knows. My best guess is this, Andrew. I do not think that China is ever going to take over the world like the UK and America did. Mm. Like- I think English is going to continue to be the predominant language globally. It's going to even be more of a lingua franca as it continues. Yeah, English so. is, a, a, is a dope language. Actually, it's my favorite language. Uh, it's very flexible. It incorporates foreign vocabulary very well. If you guys actually study the structure of English, I think that China's rise to number two, Andrew, if it does get there, it's going to be more like Skechers to Nike. Did you know that there's a few years, Andrew, where Skechers actually outsells Nike? Like, the number one selling shoe model that year is a Skechers model. Right. Like, it surpassed New Balance, Asics, Adidas, all these, like, much cooler brands. Nike's still dominant. And Nike's not only dominant from a bird's eye perspective, but also from a cool level. Skechers, Andrew, not cool. So, Skechers sometimes, depending on the year, outsells Nike in revenue, but nobody really thinks about Skechers. And nobody thinks Skechers are cool. But if you think about it, 
all the workers, nurses, a lot of older people, a lot of people wear Skechers, even though you don't think Skechers is cool. Yeah, anytime you see a shoe and you don't know what it is, and it's just like servers at a restaurant, there's a chance that those are Skechers. Right, right. So, so that's why I'm always like, people are like, no, there'll never be another Nike. I'm like, nah, because Nike's dominant and cool. But you could just have a really big brand like Skechers. Right. So China might dominate in a way, but will never be that cool or on a on a kind of like soft power level. Yeah, that's what I honestly think will probably happen. Yeah. So I don't know if people want to be and then as the terrified of that. Yeah, yes I mean, no. I like, think a lot of people say think dominance. That means a bunch of Chinese people are going to start marching into every city and like yeah. taking things over and like taking your business. i like, dude, it's They're not just talking gonna... about, it's just, I think in 2023, it's more like macroeconomic ownership, to be honest. I mean, yeah. ultimately I think the thing is it'll, it might never have like the peaks of the U S or the UK, but it might also not have as many like wars or like drug or gun issues too. Right. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, guys. It's just going to look different it's from the East, from the West. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below was Nicholas Maduro while and now in Beijing, who knows what? Hey, guys. And uh, what do you think about this quote? And what? how do you guys feel about it? Uh, let us know about the multipolar world and what your opinions are. So please let us know in the comments down below. Yeah, we encourage debate in the comments section. Keep it civil, guys. Uh, Try to use facts. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.